and I are taking you out on an exciting walk today. We were specifically waiting for miserable weather because the story that we have to tell you is not a cheerful one and it felt wrong to talk about it in the sunshine that we've had recently. We are going to tell you the legend of the ancient oak at Lalande. This lovely country lane used to be a private road belonging to the chateau, but it was given to the commune back in the 1960s which is actually rather lucky because it means that we don't have the upkeep of it. The chateau used to be part of a 600 acre estate and we only bought 60 acres and the chateau itself. So the tree that we're going to see now is no longer on the chateau's land, it's on our neighbour's land, which is in a farm that used to belong to the chateau. Just to the right, up ahead, you can see that we're about to pass the ruined mill at La Lande. And to the left is the wetland where we used to have the lake, but it's rained so much in the last couple of days that you can see it's become a bit of a bog, which is actually pleasant because it's nice to see water there again. There's our chapel. Mummy thinks I'm crazy because I really like going for a walk when it's raining and she doesn't understand not going out when it's beautiful weather. When it's beautiful weather, I always stay indoors. But when it's raining, I love coming out. Daddy was the same, wasn't he? Exactly. The two of us would run out the minute it started raining. Even along the path here, there are so many bluebells. Though, of course, it's nothing like the splendour of our bluebell wood. For those of you that didn't see it, if you look at our Easter video, you'll see the bluebells are magnificent. There's the old boathouse. Here is our ruined mill. And you can hear the stream just in the distance. It's just there where the trees are. So much water today. Now one day we will restore this ruined mill. Imagine the views it will have to the other side. Believe it or not, that is the ruined mill. But it's very much in disguise as ivy at the moment. And here you get a slightly better view of the walls, which if we clear the ivy, will be quite spectacular. And then maybe the bits that are missing could be replaced with glass. I think it's going to make a beautiful dwelling one day. Just next door to the chateau. There's the heron in the distance. It's very busy at the moment. It's such beautiful land, this part of France is exquisite. It's so unspoilt. And it's not this quiet because of lockdown. It's always this quiet. <laughs> There's one of the entrances into our wood with that ancient stone wall. Now we're going towards our second lake. And this is the second lake, the only one that still has water in it, though hopefully we'll rectify that one day. That's a family of ragondins in the distance. They're a type of South American beaver and are considered a bit of a nuisance, but they're actually quite cute. We have arrived. Here is the magnificent Chêne du Nôte, considered one of the two most magnificent trees in the entire department of Indre. There's a plaque with its name at the base. That's how important this tree is. Le Chêne du Nôt. Extraordinarily, as you're just passing on the road, you don't get a sense of just how big this tree is, but it is actually seven meters in circumference. It's enormous. And it's in surprisingly good condition, considering its age, there's just a few branches lost. There was actually a booklet written about three of the most important trees in this area, called The Legend of the Three Oaks by Jean de Bruyère, written I think in 1998. And one of the trees is of course this Chêne du Nôte. And that's the legend that I want to tell you about today. Legend has it that back in the 15th century, there was another chateau near La Lande called the Chateau du Bouex. That might well be true because this farm is called Le Boué and so may well have been part of that estate. And we are just next door to La Lande. 
1448, the lord of that chateau, Guillaume du Bouex, was on his way to midnight mass with his wife, Marie, in Causon sur vavre which is our local village, down that road. Halfway there, he was attacked and challenged by a man called Hugues de Chambourin, who killed him in front of his wife and his two daughters. And all of that horror was just because the Lord of Bouex had not paid his taxes to the overlord in a local town called saint sever Hugues de Chambourin wanted to please that overlord so much that he took it upon himself to kill the man who hadn't paid his taxes. But even in those days, non-payment of taxes was not punishable by death, and it was an illegal act to have killed poor Guillaume. The local priest at Causon sur vavre was a man named Germain, and he insisted that the murderer, Hugues de Chambourin, pay for the chapel of St. Catherine in the church at Causon sur vavre And he also, in memory of Guillaume, planted this oak tree here on the very spot of his death. And that is why it is called the Chêne du Not, because Not means Christmas in Berrichon, which in French is Noël. It's the Christmas oak because the murder took place on Christmas Eve. But the story doesn't end there, because whilst it may be just a legend that this oak was planted because of that murder, it turns out that the murder certainly took place. A local historian did some digging and discovered that the widow of Guillaume de Bouex, who was so cruelly murdered, turned to the lord of our very own chateau for help Jacques de la Lande, and in fact he helped her so very much that he married her. And he fought for justice for her and for her two daughters against the murderer, Hugues de Chambourin, and finally won. The papers of the tribunal are apparently still available to find today, and Hugues de Chambourin was sent into exile for that murder. Marie and her daughters became part of the family of Lalande, and maybe that's why these lands were united and stayed together until we bought in 2005. But what's truly beautiful is that when we only bought one-tenth of the property, every single other farm was bought by the tenant farmers who'd been farming there for hundreds and hundreds of years. They had far more of a right to this land than we ever did. A tax document that we found in the local archives dating from the 13th century lists all of the lands around Lalande and the names of the farmers there, and it's the same names today. Having grown up in a peasant village in France, my mother is so happy to think that the tenant farmers are finally owning their land today. Absolutely, it took a few hundred years, but they did it. <laughs> Standing near this magnificent oak reminds me of a poem by Alfred Joyce Kilmer, who died in the Second Battle of the Marne in the First World War. He wrote, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Isn't that beautiful? No matter which century we were born in, trees affect us in the same way. Now we're walking home in the drizzle, my favourite weather. <laughs> and it's quite good because we know we're walking home to a delicious Sunday lunch cooked by Marie. Ooh. And we need to light the fire in the entrance hall and eat oh. there. Yes, it could be wonderful. Now we're back into our land and lunch is near. We found a magnificent snail on our way home and Mummy's very worried about it because it's in the middle of the road. So snail relocation services are moving it 
to the side that it appears to be aiming for. Very important to stop on our way home to help the snails. Which is not really the French way. Most French people will probably be going home to eat them. Not my mother. Mm, she appears to be trying to communicate with it. There's our ruined mill that we passed on our way to the tree. And there's the chateau coming into sight. Lunch is near. What have you found, Mummy? I found two orchids here. They're protected. Gosh, they're beautiful. I can't think of their name. Yes, there's a few along there. There are quite a few of them here. Here we are, home. And what is home? Home is your castle. Yes, home is everyone's castle. Exactly, that's what I mean. In this case, it's yours, but it's everyone's <laughs> castle. It's where the heart is, Mummy. Oh, look, Thor's sitting on the gatepost in the distance. Now that is quite a sight when you arrive home at the end of a long walk. Thor, you're magnificent. Mummy spotted another opportunity for a bit of gardening. Mama, we have to go and lay the table. Okay. It's satisfying, yes, but I'm we have to go to in. Yes, but we have to lay the table. Mama, in we go. home just in time for lunch. Happy Sunday, everyone. A huge thank you to all of our patrons at Lalande who are making this vlog possible, especially our Marquis and Marquis of Lalande. Dan Banda, Daniela, Laura Demare, Caroline Foster, Brenda Gibbons, Lok Hutikova, JC Award, Maureen Palmer, Colleen Troyer, Brian Woodward, and David Young. And thank you to all of you.